What's up, chess player? I want to share with you the toughest games that I have had in the German Chess Championship. Why? Because my opponent played the London opening. I mean, I, I so much hate this one. It's so difficult to fight against it. I hate playing it. I hate playing against it. Let me show you why. So d4, d5, and bishop f4. And my opponent tricked me a little bit with a move order because I have prepared some variations with knight to f3, but he's not playing knight f3 at all. And then my setup is c5 and queen to b6, like here. After knight f3, I was going to play queen to b6 and at least attack this b2 pawn and at least there is some life in the position. But uh, my opponent played instead knight to c3 immediately and then I thought that queen to b6 is not really that great because now there is yeah all sorts of moves, d takes c, knight to a4, I mean, yeah, that doesn't seem to be great and the engine agrees with me. So I, I was just stuck with my preparation, I mean, I had to con continue on my own, I didn't know what to do here. I played a6 because, I mean, this knight to b5 seems to be pretty scary. I guess they call it a uh, Jabava London if you don't play the if you don't touch the C pawn and you play knight to C3 instead and it's pretty tricky here and like I said it's just not for me both playing uh, it and playing against it I mean I just played a6 to make sure that everything is fine my opponent took the pawn which seems to be pretty logical the most active move knight to C6 now I'm not afraid of anything and I want to play e5 so knight f3 happened, and now e6 immediately. Initially I wanted to play bishop to g4, just bringing the bishop out, trying to, you know, be as active as possible, once again creating the threat of e5, but the point is, not always such a strategy is great for you, because, uh, well, I was worried about this h3 idea, and then if I go back, the g4, bishop g6, and yeah, all of a sudden I don't feel myself good at all here. For example, g5 immediately might be a huge problem and then, then the d5 pawn is going to be lost, the knight is gonna come to c7, I mean, I might be lost here before even starting the game. So I don't want to do that. Then it means I have to give up the bishop here, but you know me, I'm not a big fan of giving up my bishop for a knight, so I didn't want to do that at all. Instead, I played here as a move e6, just attacking this pawn on c5, and once my opponent played knight a4, which is a yeah, logical step just to continue. Now, if I do nothing, he wants just to play a3 before or c3 before, and then I'm never gonna get this pawn back. So I played knight to d7 immediately. Remember that b4 square is covered, that is why I thought it's so important for me to have this knight on c6, and that is why I played a6 to make it possible, so that knight, before, knight b5 is not an idea. So knight d7, I'm attacking the pawn, there is no way to uh, to defend it, so I thought in the end of the day we exchange it and we have a pretty normal position here after castles. And it seems like, yeah, it's, it's balanced and uh, I have survived the London, let's uh, put it like that, and I was very happy about it. But still, the problem is, if you want to play for a win and you're playing against London, how do you do that? I mean, the, the position is so solid for white, there are no weaknesses whatsoever, and yeah, of course I wanted to play for win, my opponent was around 2200 rated uh, player, but yeah, I always want to play for win, and in this case it's so difficult. Yes, my position is pretty solid, but I have this bishop on c8, which is still very, very passive, so I wanted, like, my goal was to play e5. Once I'm able to do that, then the bishop is open to go, then I have some initiative, I have some play, that would be great. But of course my opponent is not sleeping, he's also yeah, doing something, creating some threats. He played here a3, trying to prepare the move b4 and then probably c4. So I decided how I can stop it. I mean playing a5 is weird, because you know, all you do is you are just weakening your own pawn structure and then still c4 is coming, then the rook is coming, so I thought it's more important for me to stop the c4 move. That is why I played the move b5, which is, yeah, you might say, weakening the, the pawn structure too a little bit, but I thought that, yeah, there are no real holes here, uh, I still want to uh, continue my plan uh, with playing e5, so that should work for me. Bishop d3, and now f6. Yeah, because otherwise this knight is coming and white could create a pretty huge attack here, so you should always uh, be careful with your opponent's counterplay. Or maybe in this case, yeah, he's the one having more initiative here, so I just should be very careful with it. And f6 is very good from both uh, points of view. It stops the, the attack from my opponent and prepares the moves that I want to play e5. And don't worry about the skin. I mean, it's not weak as long as 
a heavier light squares bishop to cover all of the light squares, your king is not weak, so don't be afraid of making moves such as f6. So e4, and yeah, it's important for me not to open up the position, another very uh, useful here positional moment, because when you are doing something like that, and then you open up the position, your opponent has a lot of uh, interesting opportunities and you just don't want to allow that. So what I'm doing instead, I'm playing d4. I want to close the position as much as possible. And then of course I want, oops, I want to play e5. So that pawn structure is perfect there. And then I have some additional opportunities. And maybe once I'm very solid, I might even try to play f5. But still, for now, I don't want to open it. So <coughs> my opponent could try to play e5 trying to still open up. And I thought that is the most active opportunity for my opponent. But firstly, that means that the game is going to be very sharp from now on. And that is what I wanted, because that would give me some chances to outplay my opponent. So if you want to outplay a slightly low-rated player, you want to shake the position, you want to create some unbalance, and that would make it more complicated. So the chances that your opponent is not going to make all of the uh, good moves is high. So. Uh, here I was going to play f5 and maybe prepare the move g5 and also I have this d file for the knights to go potentially and what is maybe even more important this huge diagonal for my light square bishop so I was pre pretty optimistic about this position and otherwise I was going to play e5 and yeah as mentioned so b4 my opponent is trying to create some counterplay remember it doesn't matter whether you're playing white or black it doesn't matter whether your position is good or, or bad you always want to create some counterplay. I'm gonna repeat it once again because it's so important in chess. Doesn't matter who you're playing against, whether you're playing as white or black, or whether your position is good or bad, you need some counterplay. You need a plan. You don't want to just stay there in the corner waiting for your opponent to come and just crush you. So you want to create some uh, ideas here, b4 and then a4. That was the plan of my opponent and maybe even c3. I was afraid of this move because once again, I don't really want to open the center that much. So I played here bishop to b6 because I thought that if one day you're going to play c3, then at least my bishop is going to be active. And that was, I mean, objectively, all of the moves with the bishops here are around equal according to the engine. But I think from a practical point of view, I really needed to step back to e7 because then I'm not allowing him to play a4 or at least make it much more difficult to make. And the way it happened, he just played a4 here and suddenly I realized I don't have anything at all. I mean, my, my attack here is not ready completely. All I, I can do is just weaken my position. And otherwise, he's already creating some threats here, attacking the b5 pawn. So suddenly his counterplay is much more significant. Yes, the pawn structure is great. Everything is very solid. I control a lot of squares. So what? I mean, what do I get out of it? Absolutely nothing. So yeah, that was a pretty scary moment and I decided that I should be careful here not to lose. So I took it and played bishop to b7, queen went to a1 and now a5. Yeah, I had a very interesting opportunity here, knight to a7, because I'm opening up my bishop and unfortunately I have missed it. I mean, I was thinking for a long time in this position, trying to make it work, some weird moves. It just didn't work out. And so I decided in the end of the day I have to play a5 and just simplify everything and hope it's gonna work. But knight a7 was such a huge uh, opportunity here because according to, uh, to the engine you should play bishop takes a6, exchanges this pawn for this one. But from a human perspective, it's such a counterintuitive thing. I mean, now this bishop is very strong, the pawn is hanging, the knight is hanging, I have some activity, I don't have this weakness on the a6 square anymore. You, yeah, I, I wouldn't want to exchange such a pawn for this one. Let me know in the comments if you would play bishop uh, takes a6 as white here. Because otherwise, this position is bad for, for, for white. For example, you play rook b7, uh, sorry, rook b1. Now after knight b5, this position is simply much better for black. I mean, that is very amazing. And that was, I believe, my biggest chance to play for win here. I played a5 here, and that gives a huge advantage for white. It doesn't seem that way, but it, it is really true because now takes takes and the right move was rook to b1, it has been played, now bishop takes d2, try to pause the video for a second and find the right way to continue for white. That's going to be very instructive for you. 
Okay, I hope you succeeded. So the right one is rook takes b7. You don't want to take this bishop. Although it seems to both of us, to the players during the game, that it, it's better to take this one. Because now bishop to c3 with a tempo. But first of all, you have this check, the king goes away. And then somehow, I mean, you know, when you have opposite sides bishops in the end game, it's a sign towards a draw obviously, but in the middle game, it's completely the opposite. It gives the attacking side more opportunities. And even though this bishop, yeah, it's not that simple to find any good uh, things to do, but this position is much better for white. h4, h5 is a plan, or yeah, somehow just trying to get to it on the queen side. Uh, the position is just much better. But from a human perspective, it's, mo it's not that simple to, to prove it as a person. And it might seem like this bishop is completely useless. It's just a huge fat pawn standing there on d3, but not doing much. And I could understand uh, my opponent here. So he took uh, the bishop on d2 instead and just offered me a draw. And this position is still much better for white. So what should I do? Of course, I agreed to a draw because, you know, uh, there is only a chance to lose it. I mean, Maybe I could still hold it somehow, defending the bishop here and hoping for something. But I felt like only white could push here if he wants. If he doesn't want, if he offers a draw, okay, I'm happy to take it. So we uh, we agreed to a draw, and that was the the toughest game of my tournament here. So if you want to take a look at the most beautiful one, definitely take a look at this video because I promise you, you're gonna regret if you're not gonna watch this game.